What's up everyone and welcome to Lancelot's Nerd Corner, I'm Lancelot. And a few days ago, we, the Six Scale community, were blessed with a development in the industry. A new player entering the game. And that player is JND Studios. Now primarily JND is a statue company, but it's been known for a while that they wanted to enter the Six Scale market. And this is how they're doing it with Kojun Works. They're a brand under JD, but they focus on making premium, and I mean premium, six scale figures. So then they came out with this teaser, basically showing off some of the very notable features and improvements that they hope to bring to six scale. And let me tell you, they're pretty impressive. So I just want to go through them and then maybe talk about some of the concerns or drawbacks that might come with it. So the first thing up, right, is this. The world's first patented, they even patented it, um, silicone replication technology. Now, what I'm assuming that means is that they're basically going to make um, the figure, or at least the parts of the figure that aren't covered, they're going to make it out of silicone. And I think that's notable because they want to use it for the head sculpt and the neck, which I don't think we've ever seen in six scale. Obviously we've seen seamless bodies, silicone bodies, but I don't think ever head sculpts and neck joints. That's what's really interesting. And I'm, and I'm assuming that's what the patent, that's what their technology is focusing on. And they show it off here with the, uh, well, the Joker head sculpt, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And let me tell you, it does look very realistic. It really does. Um, they also have the invisible joint technology, patent pending. I'm assuming that just means the seamless neck joint, but then again, do you really need to patent that? So here we get a little bit more detail. We get to see that silicone skin. And as you can see, the way it moves is really, it's really interesting. I mean, it could be as close to lifelike as we can possibly get in six scale potentially. But then again, that's what I said about in our, but here we go. Now, this is the thing that I was really, intrigued by now it says skeleton so i'm wondering if they're gonna have like an actual skeleton within the entire body of the figure or just a skull inside the head skull i guess because they're using silicone they do have to have something you know hard and robust underneath or else you know it'll, it'll just like be squishy and floppy so i guess that's why they have to make the skeleton here we get another look at that invisible joint for the neck because usually this would be a neck peg, right? Or it would be a fixed neck. And so they've basically found a way to combine the best of both worlds, being able to move the head independent of the neck, but still keeping it seamless. That is impressive. That really is impressive. Now this is something that really, really caught my eye. It's the articulated hands. So it's basically a seamless forearm but you can still articulate the wrist joint and the individual fingers. This is game changing. Obviously, there is a bit of concern regarding how strong the joint is. Will it be able to hold accessories is the question. And I guess the answer to that would be maybe they'd provide a pair of these seamless silicone hands, forearms that aren't meant to hold accessories and they're kind of just meant to be gesturing hands. Kind of like with the in art, they had a pair where he was like kind of like pointing like this, right? You wouldn't need to, you wouldn't have any accessory to put in that hand. I guess this could be a case in which you don't need to use an accessory for this seamless hand slash forearm. You just use it as a gesturing uh, thing. I remember thinking, how could it get be any better than in art? with the forearms, the seamless forearms, those were fantastic. And J&D found a way to level that up even more. That's crazy. And I'll tell you, even the skin texturing looks on point. Now, this is something that I think is one of the most, if not the most um, interesting parts about this reveal is the magnetic moving eyes. I think not having to, you know, touch the head sculpt unnecessarily is the best way to to move the eyes now my only complaint or concern i guess is that with this kind of magnetic movement i think it has to be separate movement of the eyes right kind of like with hot toys the separate rolling eyeballs which 
I always, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I, I will never understand why they made it separate. They had the parallel movement and then they switched it to separate, which doesn't make sense because human beings, we have parallel moving eyes. Our eyes don't move independent of one another. So why would they be separate? That's why the way Inart does it, I think, currently is the best with the parallel moving eyes with the joystick at the back of the head, but then you have to remove this panel at the back of the head. And if you have a, a rooted hair figure, well then you have a potential to mess up the hair. So this I think is the best way to do it. And if they found a way to move the eyes parallel together with one magnetic thing or somehow, that would make it the absolute best. But I, I do fear it might have to be separate um, moving eyeballs. And if so, how precise can you move the eyes so that they basically line up in the same direction. And of course, last but certainly not least, we have the rooted hair. And this is crazy because this looks, I think it looks better than the Inart one, man. Now to be fair, I have, I don't own the uh, rooted hair Inart Joker, I have the sculpted one. And maybe my mind needs a refresher on how good the Inart rooted hair looks, but let me tell you, this looks good. This looks damn good. So yeah, that's basically the teaser, all the stuff that they showed. Um, obviously not a lot of information. They're kind of just probably intentionally keep it vague. Just give us collectors a taste of what they've been cooking in their kitchen. But I'm really, really excited to, to learn more and get more details. Now, as great as what they've shown has been, it isn't without concern. And I think the number one thing that's on collectors' minds is the price. I really thought Inart was the price ceiling for 6 scale. I think J&D might push that even further. I think it's almost a certainty they will. I've seen some rumored prices with different SKUs and stuff at about $800 to $1,700, which is pretty freaking crazy. And probably the batch sizes will be much lower because naturally I think most collectors are already priced out of that range. And again, that's just, those are just rumored prices, purely rumors. And I guess, you know, it's really up to the collector and how much value they see in, you know, the different technologies and patents that um, j and is bringing with these figures. I think another concern, especially for, for someone who lives in a hot and humid climate like me, is the longevity of the silicone and the risk of it potentially drying out or cracking over time. And that's one of those things that's like, we'll only really know with time, right? Time is the, really the only thing that can tell us that. And I think as long as temperatures don't fluctuate way too extremely, and if you invest in like, you know, silicone hydration gel, that type of thing, I think it should pr last pretty long. But then again, how long is pretty long? The last concern slash complaint really that I've heard collectors talk about is the character. Another Heath Ledger Joker in the purple coat outfit, really? Now look, I love the Dark Knight. I love Heath Ledger's Joker. So I don't think I will ever really get tired of seeing it, but I think character saturation is a thing. Character fatigue is a thing, but I do think J&D here is offering enough new technologies and improvements that could reignite the interest in some collectors. So at least they've got that going for them. But yeah, I really would have loved to see, you know, at least another outfit of the Joker, bank robber, nurse Joker. But yeah, I mean, character fatigue kind of is a thing. At least it's a very, very popular character. And again, love the Dark Knight, love the Joker. So I don't think I'll ever get tired of at least seeing it. Collecting it? Probably. Seeing it? Nah. So that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really would love to know your guys' thoughts on this teaser and, and what JD Studios is cooking. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Lancelot's Nerd Corner. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.